In this video, I'll explain snapshots and how we can successfully use them. And we'll also talk about some of the disadvantages of snapshots and potential issues that they can cause. But first and foremost, what is a snapshot? Well, here we see a virtual machine. Right? And at this moment, this virtual machine has certain programs running. It has contents of memory. It's also got a virtual disk. And a snapshot is used to take a point in time picture of a virtual machine. So let's say, for example, on this virtual machine, we need to perform some sort of update. And we want to give ourselves a fallback point just in case something goes wrong with this update. And this virtual machine is powered on. So there's information currently in memory. And also, there's the contents of data that are stored on my virtual disk. Now, when we take a snapshot, a new file is created called the VMSN file. And in this file, the current contents of memory are stored. So now we have half of our point in time picture of this virtual machine. The other thing that we need to capture is the current contents of the virtual disk. The other thing that happens when we take a snapshot is that this virtual disk or VMDK is going to be marked as read only. This ensures that no changes will be made to the data on this virtual disk and it will be preserved exactly as it was when we took our snapshot. So when that original virtual disk is locked, a new Delta disk is created. And remember, this is a running VM. So now that the original disk is read only, we need somewhere to write changes to. So that Delta disk is going to be where all of our live data writes go moving forward. So those are the components that get introduced when you take a snapshot. And now we have our back out point, right? Now we have a point in time picture of exactly what was going on in this virtual machine at a given moment in time. And let's say that our software update doesn't go so well. You know, now maybe we need to revert back to the snapshot. We need to fall back to that fallback point that we created. If we decide to revert to a snapshot, the contents of that VMSN file are restored to memory. Now the contents of memory are exactly as they were when we took that snapshot. The delta.vmdk is discarded because we don't need those changes that have been made since the snapshot. We want to revert to our virtual disk the way that it was when that snapshot was taken. So the original vmdk is simply unlocked and is no longer read only. And now our virtual disk is exactly back to the way it was and our contents of memory are exactly as they were when we took that snapshot. However, snapshots are not without their limitations. So for example, let's go back to this VM. And again, the virtual machine is running and it has a single virtual disk. And when we take our snapshot, the contents of memory are captured in that VMSN file. The VMDK is marked as read only. And the new delta.vmdk is created and moving forward, that's where all live writes of data occur. Well, what do you think will happen if we leave that snapshot in place for weeks and months? That delta disk will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually we may decide that we don't actually need this snapshot anymore. Let's say it's been three months and we finally decide to delete this snapshot. This means that the last three months of changes are all located on that delta disk and we can't just throw all that data away. When we delete the snapshot, all of that data needs to get copied back to the original VMDK. So as we delete the snapshot, the VMSN file is no longer needed. There, there's no point in hanging on to the contents of memory at the time of the snapshot. So the VMSN file is simply purged. Then the original VMDK will be unlocked and all of the changes that have occurred since that snapshot was taken will now need to get committed 
to that original VMDK. This can be time consuming and it can also cause the size of this virtual disk to temporarily expand while that copy operation is in progress. It may actually consume more space on the data store than it normally does. One other side note, at times, deleting a snapshot can take a very long time. If you've left a snapshot out there for an extended period, it may take a long time for that snapshot to delete. Just be aware that once you start deleting a snapshot, you cannot cancel that process. Also be aware that you cannot shut down or reboot that virtual machine while the snapshot deletion is occurring. So what do we take away from all of this? Well, a snapshot is a point in time picture of a virtual machine. It captures the exact state of the VM at that moment, but it is not a backup. It should not be retained long term. When a snapshot is taken, that original VMDK is now marked as read only to preserve the contents of the virtual disk exactly as they are. And all live changes will now go to a delta.vmdk. When a snapshot is deleted, all of those changes that are in the delta.vmdk must now be committed back to the original VMDK. Snapshots are useful for short term needs such as creating a fallback point before making a change. I personally have a policy that I will never leave a snapshot in my environment for more than one week because at that point, the Delta file can become very large and it can become more and more difficult to delete that snapshot.